Nice. Ladies and gentlemen, I am joined by Chris Fishgold, who is relaxing in the hotel at the moment after his lovely COVID test. Um, how was the COVID test anyway? Is that the first one you've had? Yeah, first, first one I've had. Um, it wasn't fucking nice, let's put it that way. <laughs> uh, yeah, I thought, thought I was going to choke. Have you seen, they, they have to like, move it side to side about 10 times as well. So, oh. um, yeah, it's not something I'd, I'd say... Yeah, go and get one. Don't I mean, unless you really have to. <laughs> yeah, you've only got a couple more to go as well of them, so it's not too bad, is it? Yeah, yeah. Just, we'll see anyway, won't we? <laughs> yeah. And so obviously you're fighting Jared Gordon. I thought that was a wicked matchup, in my opinion. I thought it's a, a nice fight to come come into because, like for example, your last fight against Macwan. You were doing really great in the fight, to be honest with you. I thought you were winning the fight. Your striking was on point. He had a bit of difficulty himself trying to get the timings on. It was just that moment there where you were you were rushing, you were wrestling to get out and escape, and he was just he jumped in for the submission. It was a kind of crossover between the two where he slipped in that submission when you were trying to. It looked like you were trying to get the leg to go for the single or something, reach out for a peek out or something. Yeah, you know what? It was it was just one of them fucking. Um... I hold my hands up and I got caught slipping. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And in this sport, it can happen. It's happened to me twice now. I felt like it happened with Catter and then with him. And it was just not so much mistakes because I was doing the right thing. Do you know what I mean? And I'd say it was more so me just, you know, when when I fought Catter, I actually did get caught slipping. Mm. Um, and when I fought Machwan, I was trying to wrestle back up, but yet. Just bad decisions by me, really. You know, Catter, I should have kept on moving. Yeah. Um, Machwan, I should have, I should have sprawled instead of going for the guillotine or played me guard. But um, I, I feel like I've, I've not even proved to anybody else, but more so proved to myself. I belong there with the elite. You know, I think Catter's top five now, and I know where Machwan's top 15. And nine times out of 10, I'd beat them. I know I'd beat them. You know, people seen that. Um, it's just now keeping me composure mm -hmm. and not making any of them silly, silly mistakes I made. Yeah. yeah, sometimes it is just momentary lapses in fights and everyone should know that it can happen literally, like you say, split second and that's it. With the fight against Jared Gordon then, is there anything specific about him that you've been looking at to work around? And obviously because he'll have his strengths and he has weaknesses. Is there anything about him that stick out to you? Um... He, nah, not really. He's, he's a similar fight to me. He, he will wrestle if he has to, but um, similar to the, the, my my past couple of fights, he, he'll just go forward and swing, and mm. um, he's happy to get in a war, and it's it's good because you know I am four for a year. I'm happy to get in a war, and yeah. you know with all this coronavirus stuff happening, and you know people not being able to work, and that times are hard, so I'm coming for that <laughs> yeah. bonus. <laughs> I was going to say that because obviously the time off, you obviously had a lot of training and then the coronavirus kind of hit. How have things been for you and the boys and obviously Molly as well and, and Rimmer and how has things been in the gym? Because I imagine there's been a bit of a restriction on who's been able to train. You know, I, how was it all going down for you guys there? Um, at first, it, it, was, it was pretty hard. But, you know, obviously mm. as as um, it started to get a little bit more relaxed, um, I know Paul applied for... I think it's an elite athlete thing where if you're a pro, um, they allow so many to train at a certain time. So ah, okay. it was, it, it was, it was, it, it was all right. Like I said, I don't think it was the camper probably not, never trained as much as me previous camps. But as I'm getting older and I'm putting them more into the sessions, I feel like my body needs that extra, extra weight. Uh, off with extra bit, mm. bit of time off, you know, we still train a good what, three, four hours a day. Um, and I feel that sound, and then around that, you've got your running and your strength and conditioning, obviously. So, um, I, I feel great coming into this fight and mentally prepared, physically prepared, um, more so than the other ones, to be quite honest with you. So, I, I'm looking forward to um, Sissy and what I can do. I hopefully, yeah. my body. Um, does as much as my mind knows I can do, do you know what I mean? Yeah, have you prepped in any way for Abu Dhabi, obviously, with the humidity and stuff like that? Have you kind of taken that into consideration? Yeah, definitely. Be. I've fought in, um, I've fought in what's it called, hot, hot countries before, yeah, though. Yeah, you have, yeah. Um, 
and I've also went from like I know it might not be similar, but in a, in a way it is went from a very hot country um, back to I went from Thailand in fucking November, which you can imagine <laughs> what that's like, back to the UK, which is a bit different. <laughs> Yeah, ridiculous. And then fight for two weeks later when I fought Ryan Ruddy. And I think me, me body copes quite well with the, um, with the temperature change. But I wouldn't say it's more so the temperature change. You know, as they, they built this, obviously, in the arena. So mm. I know it's going to be a conductor death. So um, I, I think it'll be similar. It'll more so just be the training outside or anything. And to be quite honest, the, um, I think it'll probably work better for weight cuts. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, so I too. Before, I hope it works better. Than <laughs> <it goes. laughs> sweating away, hopefully. Yeah. If you're not sweating yeah. over there, there's something wrong with you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I was just say your strength and conditioning. You were mentioning there. Yeah, I did notice, obviously, in social media, you've been stacking a bit of weight on there and smashing up some deadlifts and that. How's that? Have you been doing anything specific there? Have you been working on kind of, kind of balancing, obviously improving the strength but you need the muscle endurance to kind of balance with that though you can't just go full ball body build kind of style training yeah you know what definitely I agree with you there but I think um, like I said although I like to lift um, like nowadays it's just literally lifting um, for me strength and conditioning squats yeah. deadlifts um, body weight stuff uh, muscle endurance stuff I, th- I felt like Going from Cage Warriors days, lightweights, where, you know, I could fucking 160, like, four sets of 10, no problem, not breaking a sweat. <laughs> so, it's like, like, cosmetic looking weights, do you get mm. what I mean? Yeah. Um, these sorts of weights now, although I'm not as strong, I'm definitely fitter and I'm definitely a lot faster. Um, I used that, I spoke to one of the UFC guys earlier when I said, I think um, the 145 version of me, would fuck the one fifty five version of me up. Um, yeah, that, that's that's pretty much it. So, um, with with the strength, it's sort of maintaining. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I know. I know. I muscle memory, isn't it? I know. If I want to put size on, and I want to go stupidly strong. I can do that all day. But you know, I'm going in this this uh, this fight to bang and swing. So that'll do me no favors in in, no. in this one. Yeah, it will definitely be kind of a. Uh endurance and speed is going to be two big factors in this fight uh, the way Gerald fights as well he'll like you say he comes forward it's something that as long as you've got those two factors in your kind of arsenal it's going to pay dividends for you uh, looking at the whole COVID situation what did you get out of it I'm curious because a lot of fighters have I've been speaking to fighters about it obviously there's pros and cons to it was there anything in yourself that you found because obviously you were tied up you're stuck in the house you know people obviously do a lot of things when they're at home and they're a bit bored and they maybe find things out about themselves. Have you found anything about you or did you find anything in general about it? Uh, yeah, I realised how much shit tell you there is. I really <laughs> did. Uh, it was like I was you know, flicking channels and it's crazy the amount of awful shit that's on nowadays. You know when you've heard yeah. seen stuff like people have tagged something in on on uh, Instagram or Twitter mm. or whatever, and you just you scroll past it, think nothing of it. But when I was at home, I got I got a chance to watch some of this shit, and I really can't believe um, it. I just don't know what people get out of it. Like why you'd waste your life away watching that, like watching shit like that. Um, other than that, nah, I I live with me brother. Um, me and my brother are quite close you know he's never fought but mm. he, he, hits, he hits pads with me uh, every single day I always keep him sharp um, yeah. and so it was just more spending family time and that you know what I mean yeah um, yeah. yeah other than that what else, what else did I do nah not really not on fucking went on a few walks and that but it's pr- pretty much the, the same me um, I got to think about a lot more stuff um, yeah. I'm not saying I had a proper fucking what did you call it is it an epiphany where you're epiphany, having a vision? Yeah. I'm yeah. Not, yeah, I'm not saying I had one of them, but I got to think of um, the route I'm going in life and look mm. back on some of my previous fights and what I did wrong and stuff. And um, Yeah, I, I just enjoyed the time off. It's not very often someone says, look, you're staying at home for fucking two months. <laughs> so, so it, although it has been such a negative thing, um, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed the just sitting at home doing nothing. So what yeah. Yeah. Giving your body a break as well. You're letting your body recover some because putting your body through obviously MMA training is and the sports conditioning it is a bit of a grind on it. And 
in a way, giving your body like a little bit of a, here you go, you can have a chill out now, like recover in a way, kind of can reinvigorate itself. Definitely. Well, you, you know what it's like yourself. You train. Yeah. If you've ever had like, you training every day and you feel fucking terrible and um, mm. like you, you're getting fucked up in the gym and that and you take like two weeks off, <laughs> come back and you fuck everybody up and it's like, whoa, would you get what I mean? Yeah. It's, yeah, it felt, felt like that coming back and it got me a lot hungrier, Joe. Definitely for fighting. It's been, it's been, it would have been a year by the time I've last fought. This this time last year I was in Sweden um, to fight Machwan and then in Washington, um, I was meant to fight there in December, and yeah. these visa issues there, they had to pull me off five days before, and then um, they were going to um, put me on the, uh, what's the card called, the F- Khabib Ferguson card, Yeah, and uh, they were looking for an opponent for that, and then obviously this happened, so I'm just hungry to get out there now, really. Yeah, getting back in it, exactly, that's the thing, a lot of guys, like, like I was speaking to Jack Shaw as well, and the, those guys were saying as well, the, it's a time off, they want to get back in to keep the momentum, they don't want to lose any momentum from fighting, last thing you want to do is be out for like a year, six, 18 months, because it can you lose a bit of sharpness, because fight sharpness is real, it's a real thing, you know, it, there is, you know, say ring rust, but it does it does play a factor. Oh, no, look, I, I totally fucking agree with you, um, it's, I, like, if you look at my career, a lot of people think, wow, he's been active, but... I should have been a lot more active. I've, if you look throughout my um, record, I've got like year, two years where I never yeah. fought and stuff. And you know, um, even before the debut, my pro debut, I think it was a year, year and a half. But my um, pro debut, UFC debut, a year, a year and a half before I'd fought. Uh, since I'd last fought, and then before that, it was another year. So in like two and a half years, it was my second fight I'd had. And walking out, it was like not so much to fight because obviously once you get hit, it's fucking on. But yeah. more so with the, you know what I mean, more so it's the walking out and you're like, shit, I forgot, like, your nerves and don't, yeah. um, like, you don't know how to deal with them, like, you don't know how fucking, you feel like you're going on that, your, your first ever date or something like that, yeah. you don't know if it's fucking scary or, but yeah, once you're used to, once you're used to that, it's not, you know, it's fucking, it's one of them things, me pride fight, it was sort of, I sort of got used to it. That would be my me, me third fight in two and a half years, but it fit in about two and a half, three years. But then the same, it made me a little bit more nervous because as I was about to walk out, I had um, like all my friends and that was right above it as joked, I'm waiting to walk. Yeah. yeah. And they're all shouting shit, that's not technical, you know, <laughs> fucking kill them and shit like this. And I just felt like saying, just shut the fuck up, I'm fucking scared, you know what I mean? I'm nervous, <laughs> not scared, nervous, yeah. but yeah, I've, it's one of them. I've my one fight. I was sad. I got booed to fuck there, and I didn't really care. Joe, what nah, doesn't matter. Yeah, it was, yeah look what I'd left. The, I, the, I never had the last laugh. Like, but I still fucking managed to take a bit out of his face. Um, he, he had the last laugh, but shit happens. I'm ready to go. On you won't thing. have any crowd here though in Abu Dhabi. It's gonna be silent. So the kind of advantage you've got, I was saying to Jack Shaw with his dad. The corner won't be able to, be able to pay, potentially understand him. Again, the corner here might not be able to stand Paul Rimmer shouting instructions. They might not understand the scouse accent, so you might get you might get away with it. Yeah, hope, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, yeah. But um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. It's more so. Um, I fought in. Do you remember the BT Studios? The, yes. Uh, yeah, I remember that Cage Warriors live. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, well, that was that was um, an audience. Yeah. Um, Events. I think it was like 50 people yeah. and it was more so like although I think it will be different the UFC is the um, the, the UFC it's just UFC people working there staff yeah they had, they had 50 of the audience there and I remember fucking um, I think it was like the fifth round and I, mm. I took an elbow and I, I fucked my eye up I split my eye top mm. of the eyelid yeah and the bottom and blood started going into my eyes, and I looked like Joe as you know against the like looking out the cage. Yeah. And I remember seeing some girl like just before the blood went in my eyes go, <laughs> and I heard every little bit of that uh, that um the reaction that, of it. Yeah, every little bit of the and I thought, oh, I'm fucking cut aren't I? And then blood just went in my eyes, and I'm just hoping it's not like that because that that can sort of get in my head. It's like, what the fuck, what the fuck she's seeing that I'm not, you know what I mean? Was that the one where Paddy threw up after the fight? Yeah, yeah, it yeah, was. It was, was. Yeah. I woke up in here, mad, I went, not many people know that, I went backstage after that fight, and I'd lost the first, first round, we won the middle three. Yeah. Um, then I'd lost the, lost the last round, obviously, but um, 
So I still won the fight. Me, me, no, making no excuses, but me and Paddy, we, we never had that much time to um, to diet for that fight. I think mm. that was the time I, I lost 10.5k in four days. Oof, that's so rough. I, yeah, I was walking around heavy, and I really did feel it in the fight, and you're seeing that. But then backstage, I don't know what he done that last round. I walked backstage, and I was getting stitched. I remember saying to the doctor, uh, wait there a second. And it, as he's lifted up, I've just vomited all over the floor. And then I woke up and I was in hospital with all fucking wires. And uh, I, they said I had like a hairline fracture to my eye socket. And that was pretty like fucking, whoa, how the fuck did I get it? That's the first time it's, that's ever happened to me. So where yeah. I, yeah. I closed my eyes and woke up somewhere. And uh, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. Um, to 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 add nice in the office, do you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, well, you've got, too, you've got a W. That's all that matters. That's it. Too much paperwork to do that, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, I'm looking forward to seeing you back in there. I know a lot of people are in the UK, a lot of uh, a lot of fans who follow you as well in the fight game, and uh, it's been a bit too long, like you say, a year. But man, it's it's going to be exciting in Abu Dhabi, man. I can't wait to see a scrap against Jero. But before I let you go, Chris, because going to let you relax for the evening. Yeah. I know you're cooped up in the hotel on your in the hotel room on your own, but. Give everyone a shout out who's helped you in the fight camp. Also, the sponsors because they they play a huge part in this COVID, especially for fighters. And last but not least, give you social media, mate. Yeah, to to be honest, the um, same as always, really. Macro Chef, that's been a massive one. Um, getting me weight down, and um, e even now, like I've showed you before this interview, I couldn't yeah. fuck all the food the idea, but. Uh, he prepared some meals for me, which um, re really helped and got me through these past two days. Um, I've got a new sponsor. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it. Um, when I can do this, I'm right flank. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's... Uh, I saw that recently on there, the social media, wasn't it, you posted? Yeah, yeah, check yes. them out. I'm, I'm not just saying that. Uh, you know, normally sponsors hit people up, kind of sponsor. I, I check their social media out. And I hit them up to see if they'd sponsor me because just the quality of the stuff looked that yeah. good. Like, do you know what I mean? When was the last time you got a t shirt that fitted that well? So, and then, <laughs> um, other than that, uh, Scramble. Scramble's been me there since day one. Um, you know, I don't even need to explain explain what they do. You know, the best they uh, grappling wear in the world. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, other than that, just my team, Next Generation, um, my coaches, Ellis Hampson, Cy Audley. Um, Paul Rimmer, obviously, and uh, me strength and conditioning coaches, um, JP, uh, he owns PT Fitness Preach, yeah, John Paul, that's above our gym, he's done me whole strength and conditioning this camp, um, just because me original strength and conditioning coach couldn't, um, couldn't, couldn't with this COVID stuff, yeah, yeah, but um, I'll definitely be doing a lot more with JP in the future. You know, you'll, you'll see come fight time. Other than that, you for taking the time, and obviously, uh, the UFC uh, and anyone who's listening, thank you for taking your time out. July 15th, you'll see me fuck someone up for you. It'll be absolutely awesome, folks. Check it out. It's gonna be a sick fight against Jared Gordon, and mate, honestly, enjoy the rest of your trip. Safe journeys and travels. It's going to be an experience and a half, mate. That whole thing's going to be insane, but uh, I can't wait to see it go down, man. Nice one, John. Looking forward to it, mate.